last framework we used, uh, in fact, what we're doing is creating uh, a framework for our for one of our customers. So what we usually do is we use several frameworks, but we create the own uh, known framework for the customer. So yes, we've picked a few things from the Kanban maturity model, but we've picked a few things from other frameworks like SAFE or even the one from DSDM. Um, so I think the best approach is to look at the frameworks and pick the things that uh, you think fit for purpose for that specific uh, customer, for that specific company. The frameworks are all trying to solve common problems. And they all have ideas in them. Some of those are good ideas. Some of them are not good ideas. And what we need to recognize is what are the good things in each of these frameworks and how do we apply that to the context in which we're working? Uh, how do we learn from the intent? Sometimes the fr frameworks are super prescriptive about how you should solve a problem. It's good to understand what is the intent behind that prescription and how in our context do we take that intent and interpret it into results and something that's meaningful. I actually think that's a really hard question to answer because I think there's resilience to change in all parts of the organization. And I don't think it's easy or fair to say that any one part of the organization is the most resilient to change or the least resilient to change. I think what's important is to recognize where there are people who are willing to change, work strongly with those people, create examples that you can use in the rest of the organization. Where there's resistance to change, understand what's causing the resistance, give people a real reason to want to change. So I, sometimes we, we focus too much on the rational reasons and don't give people an emotional reason to want to change. I think it's good to give people a, a strong emotional reasons to want to change and then help them on their journey with that. Okay. Yeah, um, I agree that in the end, you cannot say that there is a certain type of uh, department that might be more open or less, because in the end, this is, this is about people. And not even because also my, some people might wonder that is it correlated with age? Like younger people are more open, older people less? And neither. I mean, in the end, I think it's a matter of your personality type, that you are open to learn new things, that you are open to change. Those people tend to be easier in the transition. There are other people that, and no matter the age, they feel more comfortable with routine tasks, their daily thing. And those ones are the ones that you really have to support and help them through the process because by themselves they, they will feel like uh, too much a stretch in the, in the change. So you need to recognize this type of personality types in the end and no matter the age and work with them. One of them uh, as examples, so take the open ones, they're going to learn fast, they're going to change f uh, quicker and use them as an example and the others try to support them more because they will need probably much more time from your coaches or whoever is working with them than the others. So recognizing these two set of people and adapting your strategies to, to each one of them, I think it's key. I mean, uh, one of the things that when you are transitioning to Agile, there is a moment where first uh, you might start building teams and then you move on to a higher level and you really need to speed up this process because when you have a lot of teams that are kind of working to uh, stand alone, the coordination and the dependencies between them, and unless you put all the elements in place to make sure that all those teams can talk to each other and understand each other and see what the, are the dependencies, there might be a certain chaos. And even, even if you manage the process well, there will be always a chaos in the transition. A little bit of chaos is good because in the end it helps people open up but you need to manage this chaos because if it gets too chaotic or the people in the top of the company, they feel like, okay, this is weird, uh, it, it's not under control, you need to manage that, that change process. So I would say that, yeah, be very proactive in recognizing uh, chaos emerging in the company, but also very proactive in managing it and making sure that either you put the elements in place or the people in place to make sure that the transition goes smoothly. I would. 
the worst thing that I found, uh, and I found it several, and I found it several times, it's about not believing in the transformation. I mean, having the input of, oh, this is just a, this is just a fad. This is just the flavor of the month. Uh, this is something that it's gonna disappear. So if if people don't believe in the change you're leading, uh, it won't work. So it's about focusing on the mindset uh, to avoid this this kind of barriers, these kind of problems. No sé si es la peor, pero vamos, una cosa que hace mucho daño en la transformación son cuando te encuentras a aquellos equipos o aquellas personas en los que vas con toda la ilusión a hacer la transformación y lo primero que te dicen es que ellos ya son Agile, que llevan toda la vida trabajando en Agile y que tienen una mentalidad Agile desde que nacieron. Entonces, esos son las personas que al final son más difíciles de transformar porque ya te han puesto una barrera desde el principio que es muy difícil de franquear. En cambio, cuando hay gente que directamente te dice que esto no es para ellos, que no les vale, que no creen, son los que después eres capaz de revertir esa situación y con datos y resultados les convences. Más que el mayor eh, problema, yo creo que el mayor reto que nos encontramos en la transformación es conseguir que la alta dirección se incluya en esa transformación, sea partícipe. Como, como comentaba antes, no solo apoyando y dando charlas de que esto es hacia donde tenemos que ir, sino que realmente ellos también se transformen en las formas de hacer y en las formas de pensar. Eso es lo, lo que es el gran reto que tenemos ahora en, en camino y en cuanto lo consigamos, ya el resto de la organización irá, irá por el mismo camino. I would, I would add in the top of that, uh, believing that your plans uh, should be uh, on time. So having this wishful thinking of, of even that you know that it's empirical and it's about doing and, and learning from what you're doing, uh, you have some expectations. And you have some expectations about, oh, this should be done by this day. Uh, and then you realize it doesn't and then you feel a little bit frustrated, but it's, it's part of the game because some of the things are really faster than expected. So it's about balancing, trying to find the, the balance in these two things.